Hey guys, today we're doing a video that was requested by one of our viewers. He wanted to know if we would do a video showing how we set up our feeder insects. So we're going to highlight superworms today. We're going to show you from the point of delivery up until we feed them to our bearded dragons, what we do to provide our insects with proper nutrition and care. We're going to go over a list of the things that you're going to absolutely need and then I'm going to give you a couple things that are going to be optional that you might want to pick up. First thing you're going to absolutely need is some superworms. Now you can order these online. Uh, there's a lot of suppliers out there. They'll sell you superworms, ship them right to your door via FedEx or UPS. You're also going to need a plastic container like this. Now, if you want to keep the top on it, that's completely optional. Personally, I find that superworms don't really climb that well, and so having a top on it just causes the food to get moldy quicker. I like to leave the top off so that there's a good airflow. You're also going to need yourself some egg crates like these right here. One or two of these should be sufficient. You can pick these up at farm supply stores such as Tractor Supply. Also, you might want to get you a jar, an old recyclable jar. It could be anything, mayonnaise, peanut butter. In our case, it's Tostitos. You're going to need a couple of plates. These can be ceramic. Optionally, some things you may want to pick up is going to be some wood shavings, like these pine shavings here, uh, cut really fine. And if you're prone to allergies, you're probably going to want some sort of mask. If you're really prone to allergies, you're probably going to want some allergy relief tablets. Trust me on this one. And last but not least, you're going to need something to feed and water your superworms with. And we recommend the Insect Buffet, an insect watering gel combo pack available on our website. Now when it comes to setting up your plastic container, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. And I'm going to give you a couple of those ways and I'm going to share my opinion with you on each. One way is to simply use a lot of food and to cover the entire bottom of your plastic container with the food that the insects eat. The problem with doing it this way is that your insects are going to defecate in this cage and therefore they're going to be defecating right on the top of their food. That's probably not the best way to do it if you're worried about things like coccidia being passed from the insects into your bearded dragons. The other way that you can do it is to simply dump your worms right in the plastic tub without any substrate whatsoever. But what you're going to find is that superworms do like to burrow in something. For that reason, we don't recommend a bare tub. What I do recommend, being superworms like to burrow, is just some pine shavings like this and simply cover your plastic tub's bottom with the pine shavings. It'll help absorb some odor. It's not quite as bad as crickets, but they do have a little bit of an odor and these pine shavings will kind of help to alleviate some of that. It'll also give them a substrate that they can burrow in and it keeps them from crawling all over one another uh, it, as if they would if you had a bare substrate. It also helps absorb some of the feces and the frass that these worms are going to generate. Now, speaking of frass, I am very, very allergic to it. So is my daughter, Anna. In fact, when we clean superworms, most of the time we have to go take a shower almost immediately afterwards. Now one thing that you can do to help alleviate the problem a little bit is to wear a dust mask like this. But I can tell you from experience, these offer very little protection against breathing in that frass. Um, they do cut out a little bit, but this is not foolproof. So what I find myself doing is taking some allergy relief medicine right before I start working with superworms or mealworms. If you're not allergic to mealworm or superworm frass, you can certainly skip this step. All right, so you got your box uh, from FedEx or UPS or whoever delivered. Now, I wanna share one little secret with you about this. Be sure to check very often to see if these things are delivered. If you use companies like FedEx or UPS, they'll oftentimes just drop these on the front porch or on the ground outside your home. And in a very short period of time, ants can come in and get into your box of superworms and create havoc. So if you're having these delivered, check your tracking number, know the day that they're gonna be delivered and make sure you get to your superworms before the ants do. All right, so your superworms 
come in, you beat the ants to them. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is cut open these things. Now, I will advise you to be careful when you're cutting the tape across the top right here, uh, because sometimes they will be super worms right underneath this tape, and you don't wanna go slicing into them. So just cut shallow. Go ahead and open your box up and your super worms will be in here. Now, the reason I told you you're gonna wanna get some of these egg crates is because you can see that in transit, these super worms eat holes and the egg crates that they ship these in look pretty, pretty trashy. Um, they're also covered with that worm frass that I was telling you about. So what I like to do is simply take these egg crates here, make sure there's no worms on them, go ahead and get all the worms off of them, and simply discard these into the trash. Now simply take your super worms and dump them out in the box like so. And you wanna be careful you get all of these guys out. And trust me, it's sometimes difficult um, you want to take and look underneath the flaps. You also might want to take and lift up the bottom flaps here because a lot of times you'll get super worms that will actually get down underneath here. So just check and make sure that you've got them all out and then you can discard this box. So now you got your super worms in here and by doing it this way, you don't have food all over the place. So your worms are not pooping in their own food. So the way we wanna feed these is place some kind of container. Now you can use cheap plastic plates, you can use paper plates, you can use these uh, ceramic style plates here. And we like to just simply put them in the container. You can place your egg crates on top of one another and you can put them here, you can place them partially over here. However you do it, you wanna make sure the sides are not so high that your super worms can't crawl in to get food. So what we're gonna do is just kind of stack these on top of one another like so, leave a little bit overlapping here, and then we're gonna pour some of our insect buffet into this plate. Now, the next thing you wanna do is figure out how you want to give moisture to your super worms. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. One of them, I feel like, is a little better than the other. The conventional way of doing it is taking potatoes and slicing them in half and placing them into the container with your super worms. But Fortunately, there is a better way to do it where you don't have the smell of stinking, rotting potatoes sitting around in your superworm bin. And that's where insect watering gels come in. Basically, you take these insect water gels, you pour them into a jar and simply add water. So now you pour your water in here and you can see that these little gels have absorbed that water. This is the same stuff that you buy at the big box stores. They sell it already pre-mixed um, and uh, you can make a lot of this stuff with our insect water gels and save yourself a lot of money buying the pre-mix. The only thing we don't sell you is the water with it. And of course they add food color to make it a nice pretty orange or blue or green color. Um, we don't add food color to ours simply because I don't know if the food color may be dangerous to our insects, not to mention our bearded dragon. So we like to keep it natural, but you can see here it creates almost like a jello. Now this stuff is good because your insects can drink water from this without the fear of drowning. And that's especially important if you're dealing with crickets because crickets will drown in very, very little amounts of water. Yet they can drink this, but they can still walk right across the top of it. So all insects, Superworms, crickets, uh, roaches, they all will benefit from these water gels. Simply take some of your water gels out of the jar, place it on a plate, just like you did with your insect buffet, and simply place it inside your superworms container. Now you have food, you have water, you have hiding places. This is basically all you need to do to set up your superworms. Now, when you know to replace your food, it's simply when it runs out. Whenever you replace your water gels is when they turn back to the hard crystals. You can actually reuse these again and again just by simply putting them back in a jar and adding water to them. Now, something I wanna say to you about superworms is unlike mealworms, superworms will not turn into beetles 
unless they're separated. Uh, mealworms will quickly, when they become adults, turn into beetles and you have to start over. The nice thing about superworms is when your reptiles are big enough to eat superworms, you can simply buy in bulk, set them up like this, and we've had superworm colonies that would last for up to a year. So we only have to purchase superworms one time every year to feed all of our insect eating lizards. But once again, you wanna make sure that your dragon, your gecko, whatever you're feeding is large enough. As soon as they're large enough to eat superworms, we believe that this is the best uh, bang for the buck in terms of ordering them one time, set them up properly, and having proper insect nutrition to feed to your bearded dragons. But once again, when your dragons are old enough to eat these things, their diet's going to consist primarily of vegetation anyway, so the little bit of protein and fat requirements that your dragons are going to need can be met simply by using nothing but superworms. And we've said in past videos that the size of the food for a bearded dragon should be about the same size as between both of their eyes. So this dragon right here, she's big enough to start eating superworms now, but as you can see, she's still pretty small. So I'm not going to feed her a bowl full of superworms. Instead, for her size, I'll probably feed her about two. All right, so as we said earlier, by the time your bearded dragon is an adult, about 80% of its diet should be vegetation. The little 20% of its diet that's gonna be made up of protein is perfectly fine to use superworms exclusively for that amount of protein intake. Once your bearded dragon is an adult like this one, it's kind of fun to play fetch when it comes time to feed these guys superworms, simply by showing them the superworm, dropping it down in front of them, and waiting on them to see and go fetch it. Once you get these guys feeding, it's usually a lot of fun just to toss these things around and let your dragon get a little exercise running around to get his protein intake. All right guys, thanks so much for watching this video. And if you wanna see any of the products that we use in this video, you can check them out on our website at www.coldblackcreations.online. Thanks for watching. Are you starting here or am I starting here? I ain't standing here like I'm doing a Colgate commercial. You about to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ding, 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 ding.